me and Mayo meeting that one on one, y'all. Um, I was about to skip this part, but I'm not because Stormy is involved. And I think this conversation needed to be had, you know, because Stormy couldn't understand um, why they just stopped talking. You know, and I know why they just stopped talking, y'all. It's because Stormy was starting to be friends with Destiny. And Mel did not like it. And that's just what it is. And Mel can never say what it is. And it's just like Stormy said, you know, she always acting like she unbothered when she clearly is. You can see it. You know what I'm saying? So when Stormy kept trying to understand from Mel and ask her, well, what basically was the demise of our relationship? It was nothing that Melody could say. She couldn't say that because she would never admit that. You know, because on top of that, that's stupid that I'm mad at you because you was friends with another female. And look now, it looked like they're not even real cool. So, stupid. Melly was telling her, you know, I'm just not in the um, space. Always talking all business. Like, let's just say what it is. I'm trying to write down what she said, y'all. And it sounds so scripted. You know what I'm saying? It was just irritating. She was like, yeah, basically, um, I'm not going to be in no space where the mother don't like me and I'm feuding with the mother or whatever. And um, what do you think the reason why basically your mother didn't like me is what she's trying to say. And Somi was basically saying how her mother is a hard cookie to cry. You know what I'm saying? Especially when she don't know you. And the thing about it is that's not always bad. You know what I'm saying? Betty got her ways, you know, Betty, okay? I already spoke about Betty in my last video, but Betty has her ways, and sometimes you gotta put walls up for people, y'all, because you don't even know who they are yet. And when she realized who Melanie was, she ain't fuck with her. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Melanie don't understand. She's trying to figure out how she ain't even like me. How she, the way the rest of the world don't like it, the way I don't like it, because you fake and phony. You know what I'm saying? We can clearly see it. And Stormy was like, well, um, it was from TV. The TV show. Yeah, they don't fuck with you. So y'all, basically, Melanie is telling Stormy, you know, she's not in a position to be trying to build a friendship that the mother is saying how she don't like her and all this other stuff. Girl, but then don't tell nobody to contact you in your DMs. How are you trying to build a friendship, but you telling somebody to contact you in your DM? You was just mad, like I said, that she was getting close with Destiny. That's all it was. So you cut her off too, and she did not know it. That's what it was. You did not even tell her why you was mad because you couldn't because of some little ass girl shit. It's some high school ass girl shit. That's what it was. And then when Melanie brought up that, you know, she's not in the space of trying to build friendships with people who their mother don't like her and all that. And then Stormy brought in, yeah, that's just it. That's why my mother um, started feeling that way and being vocal because the friendship just abruptly stopped. You know what I'm saying? And then Melanie was like, oh yeah, um, well it was before that, yeah, because she saw you on TV and she already had you eight. <laughs> she saw you on TV and so that was a stamp for her to say, yeah, don't fuck with her. I already know how she go. You see that shit? She just stopped talking to you because she's mad about something that you did to her that she's not saying. And yeah, that's who she is. So you need to stop talking to her. And she forewarned her goddamn daughter because she already saw how you go. And that's what it was. So when the shit went down, she was already ready to let her daughter know, that's who I've been seeing on TV. That's who she is. That's what she do. <laughs> and I think even Stormy was shocked. And she's still shocked and not really realizing who she is. But y'all, can y'all imagine? I know who's telling her who she is. Courtney, when they having pillow talk, Courtney is letting her know, yeah, that ain't the bitch to fuck with. You don't need to be her friend. You don't even need to meet up with her. Courtney is real. It's all outdoors. And y'all see that mother? Courtney mother is all of that, y'all. She is all of that. And she reminds me of myself when it comes to her kids. She don't have nothing with her when it comes to her kids. When it comes to her kids, it's just straightforward for them. You know, she's sitting there talking to him. And she's letting him know how to deal with his wife the right way in his marriage. This is how it's supposed to go. You're not supposed to be hating on your child. You're not supposed to be wanting the, your child to not do good. You're not supposed to be um, looking at your child like, why are they married to this person and making problems in their marriage? You're supposed to be making sure that his heart is good and making sure that his life is goes fine because that's what you've been doing since he was little. 
okay? But y'all, some people don't think in this way, and I love this mother. She is, like I said, straightforward. What is it that he needs? What is it that I can give him? Because I'm not finished raising whatever I need to raise with him and around him, because that's my son, and how can I fix this problem? This is how a parent is supposed to be. And Courtney has a really good mom. You know, a really good mom. She don't have no shit with her. And it reminds me of me. And I, I commended myself when I looked at her. You know, and I was glad for her and him. But how he's hurting as far as his father is sad. Because this is what we really don't get to see as far as men. If they are still hurting or not. You know, I asked my own husband. And I always ask him, you know. How do you feel about, because his father wasn't in his life, and he always say he good. You know, he always say he good, and then things like this show up where a man, a grown man, breaks down and cries after what he did not get from his father. You know what I'm saying? So I stay concerned about mine in this way. He said he good. He's the type to say that he wasn't. That's why I don't understand. Maybe some people not affected. Maybe some men not affected. Or they got real affected when they was little and just know how to deal with it now. I don't know. But, yeah, Courtney is affected. And he's, you know, my husband is about to be 50. So he probably is, like, over the shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, And so maybe at yeah, this time I should have asked him this when we first got married, like, 16 years ago. But... You know, I, I, I don't know. I think that, um, yeah, he might have gotten over it by now because his father wasn't there for him as well. So, um, I feel bad for Courtney. He was like, he missed out. Um, his father missed out on a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, he wasn't there when everybody else, his teammates, was, their fathers was there for them and everything. You know, he was hurt about that. And that has to hurt, you know. But we really, like I said, never see men hurt. It's always men hurt by the mother or the girl hurt by the father. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool to watch. And I think that it let us in on who Courtney was too. You know, he's getting more comfortable in front of the camera and allowing us to see within his life because his mother was pouring it on thick. You know, she really was pouring it on thick. I had, uh, Marie, I got to review that too. I ain't do my notes to that too. But Marie, I was pouring it on thick too to that damn counselor. And I was just like sitting there thinking, girl, you need to slow up. <laughs> but y'all, um, anyway, yeah, I thought that was nice. His mother was mothering. Okay, she was really, really mothering. And I was glad for Courtney that he has that type of mother, you know, so. Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Sassy. Y'all, let's talk about this, I don't know, episode. I never know the episode. Oh, Jesus, I gotta get on top of that. Let's talk about this episode of Love and Marriage Transfer, y'all. So, Kimmy and Katya have met up. And, yeah, Kimmy is explaining to her that um, she perpetuated the lie that she was uh, messing with her husband, okay, while they were married. And basically a side chick. And, yeah, Katya was just like, you know, I don't have any control about that. And Kimmy is like, yeah, but what you say out your mouth does. You know, you have control over that, basically, is what she's saying. And I agree. You allow people to run with a narrative that wasn't true because of what you said. You said it. You said that she was messing with your husband while you were married to him. You know, and that is a side chick. So you did perpetuate it. And you, call you with your nonverbal behavior, you know, not Look at Kimmy in her eyes, picking your hair. At the time, you tell me, I just don't see how I'm responsible for that. You know exactly why you're responsible for that, and you fake it. And this is what I mean by people be faking, y'all, thinking that they can lie right in our face, and we don't see the truth. We already know it's the truth of what Kimmy's saying. You know what I'm saying? Because you said it. And then second, we can see that you're uncomfortable in the moment, and that you're fidgeting around with several things, same thing Melanie was doing. You know what I'm saying? When she was talking to Stormy, it's an uncomfortable situation because you just got hit with the truth. You get it? You know, you choose to be defensive in your fake apology. You know what I'm saying? Because she did tell Kim, you know, if it's something that you thought I said, like, 
when people start off with that type of shit, it's bullshit. But you know, Kimmy just wrapped it up and been like, okay, you know, um, it's fine, whatever she has right now, because this is the place that we are. You know, so Kimmy ain't tripping. Kimmy was really grateful that she did, you know, step up to the plate halfway and give a half apology. Um, I guess that's something that Kimmy really wanted. You could tell, you know, because she looked like she let her shoulders down everything when Kaya was saying the little half apology stuff. Because she did say Kimmy was not a side chick. You know, she did say that. So, I don't know. And that wouldn't have been good for me. It just wouldn't have been good for me, girl. I probably would have sitting there going back and forth with her, but... You know, until I got something more out of her, but Kimmy was good, and that's the grown thing to do. Then another good point she brought up, um, she was saying how she took the hit. You know, I forgot to mention that she took the hit with not saying nothing to her or not making a big deal out of it about it because Maurice was concerned that Monster was gonna look back on this show and see basically everybody acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? And then she too was concerned about her own son Jalen. You know, and him looking at her like, Ma, you was messing around with a Murray man. You know what I'm saying? So it's several things here that people need to understand and it has to do with the kids. And I always say this, you know what I'm saying? We gotta watch how we are around our kids and what we display, you know what I'm saying? Because they are looking up at us and we gotta make sure that they are being raised the right way and they see the right things because if they don't, they're gonna mimic our behavior. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, this is what Kimmy was concerned about. I always speak about this, the kids and making sure you're setting a good example for the kids because it's very important and they really in actuality come first. Kimmy was saying she took the hit for it. She feel like she took one for the team for, you know, not opening up her mouth, not to ruffle anybody feathers and make herself look ghetto on a platform that everybody can see. And I thought it was a good look. You know, she might have just been saving not only, you know, the kids and Maurice's embarrassment, but her own. You know, so kudos to them. Kimmy held her ground and didn't, you know, act a fool in this show. And that's commendable. It really is. It really is because I couldn't have did it. You know what I'm saying? I especially couldn't have did it if somebody would have been making me out to look like some type of side chick. That's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I know the truth. You know, and then Kaya was defense. She probably was, you know, upset at the demise of her marriage. You know what I'm saying? And she just said something that she was heard about and maybe she actually thought because I told y'all in my other videos that sometimes when men move along women think that the woman that they see them with at that time they've been messing with them the whole time the guy's been messing with that chick the whole time and that's just something a type of narrative that the woman has to run with you know so this is probably how Kyle was feeling oh yeah he been messing with her the whole damn time like when we was together you know what I'm saying and really thought that you know, but at the time, she probably was in her hurt, you know, or maybe she was trying to be vindictive and hurt him or her or both of them, you know what I'm saying? But just like she did say, and I was glad she did say that, she did say that, you know, she's learned from her mistakes. It was a time of growth, you know, and she felt like she has grown, girl, not with no half-ass apologies. <laughs> not with no half-ass apologies, girl, but yeah, y'all, that's their two sides, I think. Anyway, y'all, who else? Um... Martell looking at Tisha's ass. Girl, your ass was out there and it was looking good, you know, and just like um, Stormy said, yeah, you couldn't keep your eye off of it. Yeah, Martell like we saw. Martell kept on pulling his cards and was up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get Martell to stop looking at my wife's ass, you know, when it's sat out there. And then Martell said, yeah, it looked like somebody been in the weight room looking at weight. Girl, that ain't no goddamn exercise, girl. That's a BBL when I see it because Tisha ain't have all that. Tisha did not have all that, girl. Tisha is stacked, okay, and ready to go. <laughs> you know, hey, it looked good. Somebody did a really good job, like really good job. At first, I just thought it was a tummy tuck because she snatched, okay, to the gods. And I thought it was that girl, but that that damn butt, girl, your butt got a special hump that is doing everything. And yeah, so it was given. Um, I'm so glad that Stormy and Courtney are now involved in the comeback group. Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all saw Tisha face. She looked so damn refreshed. She was like, oh, just went to the bitch. Like, oh, yes, because this is a new fresh start. I think that it's too much bad blood with that one person, Melanie, and everybody deserves and needs to move on from her. You know, I think everybody would benefit from that, you know, and 
that's the one thing I agree with Melanie. It's just been too much that went on between everybody. And that's what teacher was trying to explain to Martel. It just wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? It was basically everybody. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm just glad they can move on. Like, this is going to be good. A new fresh start. They wanted somebody who could... Um, bring a lot to the table because Melanie does have a lot to bring but she is Stormy got even more to bring you know because Stormy has a household name I know a couple of little businesses you know around the corner and stuff she don't just got that Stormy has a, a world known worldwide product you know and a business and Stormy's set up at that little function that they had the comeback function was everything okay it looked like Stormy was in the building Okay, it was real pretty. The pink, the gold, the white, it was so pretty. Um, Tisha, the next time you have a problem with the fact that she took up a whole section, you need, like she said, to give her the dimensions. You know, let her know how much space she does have because just like she said, all this was last minute for me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get the dimension. So I'm gonna advertise the way I see fit. You know what I'm saying? And the way I see fit is how I'm doing it now, okay? That was so pretty. That was really, really pretty. It made me want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Because on top of that, they ain't even put like um, samples out and pamphlets and stuff. They ain't put none of that out yet. You know what I'm saying? Everything was set up, but it was everything. Her little setup was everything, and it's going to put everybody to shame because they about to have these little tie ass desks and chairs that are sitting there. Um, and these people probably, you know, dressed in this business attire, y'all looking all late. <laughs> And Stormy, she just look real colorful. Her section look real colorful and fun. So you have to come over there. That's what's going to happen. And then on top of that, Tisha tells her, yeah, and it's going to be 25 minutes. But bitch, when was you going to tell me that? You know what I'm saying? When was you going to let me know the space that I have and how many people is going to be there? Because it looked like Stormy might got to take some of that shit down. You know, it really did. You know, it was um, some space behind Stormy. That's what it looked like when I was looking. But let's get into um, Marceau telling Stormy that she need to pay $100. Marceau, where do you get off at? Like, you didn't mention this before, like she said, in the meeting. Why wouldn't you mention this in the meeting? Because you're looking real broke. This is either greedy because everybody has paid it, so you're going to make her pay something. You know what I'm saying? Or it's giving broke vibes. You know, like, you need $100. So why the hell would you come to somebody on the day of talking about they have a hundred? Now y'all know she ain't hurting for no hundred dollars. She probably could have gave him her call and say, nigga, go take two hundred. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But it's the point and the purpose behind it. Like, like she said, like you some type of bill collector. And this is not how I do business. And I hope they didn't drive her off because she just said she might not even do business with y'all. You know what I'm saying? So they better watch it and you know Tisha you should have stopped Marceau from doing this dumb ass shit and you didn't you know what I'm saying then he ended up calling her over there anyway and he gonna say yeah um Stormy is acting low vibrational but she called you low vibrational first and then you gonna tell your wife that yeah um Stormy is low vibrational no you are and then he trying to pull Tisha in and Tisha you know you not even saying nothing Staying in there, and you should have told him, you know what? I'll be over there, I'll be over there, keep on going, keep on going, because I ain't in it. That's what you wanted to do. Now you're getting embarrassed down to the TV, and you're trying to pull a teacher up to be another mouthful to jump on Stormy, because that's what had to be it. You know what I'm saying? And teacher wasn't riding with it, it was just stupid. Maurice and Monster, I was glad today was out, y'all, having a little one on one time together. And just a little bit of recreational time to just loosen up and have fun. You know, he said he won't stop with the lectures, but you ended up doing it anyway. Okay. But Maurice did say that he realized that they weren't raised the same. You know, they used to have several jobs, him and Marceau. And, you know, Monster doesn't have to do all that. But he was saying he was living through um, his child to Monster. And I think a lot of parents do this. You know what I'm saying? They live through their child on what they want them to become the best, you know, and a lot of times the child is not even listening to much that we say because like he's saying, it's boring. You know, after a while it gets boring. Monster's like, it gets boring and he gets tired of it and tired of hearing it. So they're really tuning out and they're becoming resistant. 
You know, and then not listening. We went through all of that with our sons. You know what I'm saying? And teenagers are different. They're a different species. They're a different type of breed. They're like a whole nother animal, like a whole entity. You know, you be trying to talk to them, they give you one word. You know what I'm saying? You trying to talk to them, they don't even act like you just said anything. You know, and they just real standoffish. And, you know, when they are ready to come around and talk to you and say certain things, that's when you got to go with the flow and you got to give them back. You know what I mean? Because that's when you're going to get something when they feel comfortable. But keep on lecturing them and being in their ear. It works for some, but some, it don't work at all. And they tune you out totally. You know what I mean? And your monster's just tired of it. But y'all, I was thinking something at the end of this episode when I was talking to my husband. The thing about it is, yeah, they tired. Like, I was tired of my father. Over and over again. But is that just it? What they need to be? Is that what they need to be? Tired of your mouth? Tired of the hearing? It? The shit just engraved in their brain over and over again. And that's how they get it. Because if we said nothing, and if we didn't care, and if we just let everything go, then, yeah, the child wouldn't have nothing in their head. And isn't that how things go? You learn stuff through repetition. So what if we are doing the right thing by drilling it and drilling it and drilling it, being a nagger? What if we are? Because I've become a nagger like my father. You know what I'm saying? And I just realized that I got to pick my battle. You know, every time I don't need to say something to my child about every single thing, because sooner or later, they're not going to want to hear it, and they tuned you out. And you can see when they tuned you out. You can see it. You standing there. You looking right at them, and you can look dead at them and see that they tuned you out. And you just keep on talking anyway. You know what I'm saying? And this is the part where... It's just, it's hard because we're trying to build this person up. And they really like monsters saying, I don't know myself yet. I'm trying to figure me out. There's no structure to him yet. There's no structure to build all the way yet. And we're trying to build on something that's not built up. And we want the best and we don't know what else to do. Like Maurice said, and it's the same for me and my husband. If I see you doing something, I feel like I'm doing you a dishonor and a disservice to you if I don't open my mouth and say what needs to be said in the moment. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm doing a dishonor to my child, and that's not always the case. Because, like I said, every time we don't need to say nothing. And you got to pick your battles, y'all, and it's hard, but I've learned that now, and my son is 22, and my other son is 22, too, because the other son about to be 23. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I've learned that. At certain times, you just don't say anything. And I think they can appreciate it because they know they fucked up, but they know they did something wrong. And she ain't saying, no, all right, I'm going to handle this how they said I should. You know, and they handle stuff the way you taught them. They really do. You just got to know that you put enough into them that they make the right decision. And that's just what it is. You know, that's just what it is. So I appreciate seeing more recent monsters um, conversation and hard conversations. And I'm glad that he realized he needs to lay off the lecture sometimes. And that comes with time. Nobody has made a book for us to go on and read. Because if I had a book that I could go on and read, y'all, I would have been read that motherfucker two, three times. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we're all going off of love. And we're all going off of trying to be that armor for our kids stop you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong stop it you know what i'm saying do this do this and we anxious and want the best for them and this just this is where all of this talking is coming from you know what i'm saying but we got to pick our battles and know when to say what and trust that we raise our kids right at the moment and in that moment and just keep your mouth sealed and don't say anything you know so y'all that is all for this video i will see you ladies and gents later um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah, bye.